It's the only reason that this has a different title is because you're starting to have more than a couple variables here. So you might need to use the product rule. There was one here. Some of you are already into, into doing this. If you're working with more than one here, you have to think about whether what you're working with, both of them are variables or one of them is a variable and so on. And we, we did kind of discuss that last time. There's at some, some point here, I think I put that down. Uh, you know, work with this assuming y is a constant or if it, you know, if it wasn't a constant, that makes a difference, right? If this is a constant in the situation, when you find the derivative, it's just zero and it's going to disappear, right? In other words, if this is a constant, the ra there's no rate of change. Its rate of change is zero, right? So even if you don't treat it like a constant, it's going to end up being zero. Um, this, the way it's set up here is the first, you know, you first you look at just working with the formulas before putting them in a context and then looking at some problems in context. Okay, these kind of things. Draw a picture for each of these. <coughs> and think about which direction things are, positive and negative rates. You're going to have to think about whether a rate is positive or negative. These are all, these all involve triangles, or so some of them. Um, if you have a triangle and you have something, you have to think about whether it's increasing or decreasing that particular thing, so it's going to have a positive or negative rate of change. Uh, maybe we'll check in later on uh, on things. I want to let you work with it first before looking at a couple of them together. But then this is kind of it at some point here, yeah, and I'll tell you the story about that. Oh, the story? The story. Why is there a big space? Oh, yeah. Um, that's not that interesting of a story, but Ooh. don't get too excited about it. I'm already... Uh, and then you're going to, this one's actually fairly uh, tricky to think about. It is, I don't want you to get into the, I think what, uh, with all these questions here, a lot of them involve right triangles and people get in their head that if it's involving a right triangle, it always will involve the Pythagorean theorem. You have to come up with some way that relates these things. The last one there involves not necessarily the Pythagorean theorem, but you could have like any mathematical relationship you've had before, you could have something that involves similar triangles, like if this is x and this is 10 and then this is something. What you need is to set up some kind of a formula or equation first and then try to do the related rates formula by differentiating both sides. However you, in, you know, whatever you write for the variables and whatever kind of equation you can set up, some of them are going to involve just a pre-made formula, right? Like the volume is this. Sometimes you have to write your own, which is probably harder, okay? And you can write your own based on any kind of way that those variables are related. <coughs> so if you wanted a set of steps, first you write how the variables are related and then you generate the formula that involves the rates. Don't try to directly write a formula involving the rates. Is there any questions about this before you continue on? So wherever you happen to be, I know some of you have started started that. Don't forget product rule if they're both uh, they're both variables. Some of them involve four, I think, down here somewhere. Right there, volume, lots of variables. Okay, can you get going on that? Check your answers with each other. I don't have an answer key made up for this, but I think we should actually generate an answer key for this. 